one that I gave uh, maybe six months ago. Really okay. happy with that. Uh, okay, so this talk is uh, basically an incremental update of one that I gave maybe uh, six months ago where we uh, put forward a, an idea for a new driver infrastructure for uh, uh, graphics, 3D graphics under Linux, uh, basically addressing a, a bunch of developments that have uh, occurred in, in hardware and in uh, the software environment and the things that we wanted to do with, with 3D on Linux. Uh, basically, um, uh, I've included the first few slides here, and, and um, we'll start with that. Uh, basically, it, it helps to start with um, a look at where things uh, were previously, or perhaps still are on the in production in, in the main line, what you're actually using uh, in terms of open source 3D graphics drivers. Uh, basically, we've, we've got a thing called Mesa, and, and it's probably bigger than that block, but uh, things, are, things are disproportionate to emphasize the fact that actually it's, it's not that much bigger. The, the DRI drivers over the years have gotten larger and larger uh, as they've had to deal with uh, more and more aspects of the peculiarities of OpenGL, uh, the peculiarities of uh, uh, our interaction with the X server, with uh, the kernel module, uh, and so forth. Uh, and all of these uh, competing influences are sort of boiling away in here. Uh, fighting with each other uh, and uh, working to uh, just make it hard to do uh, interesting things with the drivers, making it hard to add features, making it hard to fix bugs, making it hard to get things stable uh, or ever really done. Um, uh, so, um, I guess over the years we've written a few drivers uh, and uh, 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 We've noticed that there are probably some uh, possibilities to cut this thing up uh, and to break it into manageable chunks. Uh, and so that's that's basically the, the starting point for, for where we've where we've gone. Uh, basically, we've we've looked at uh, putting interfaces into the middle of the driver, topping, you know, taking a chunk off that's really all about GL, taking a chunk off that's all about uh, the X server kernel module, that sort of stuff, and leaving this chunk in the middle, which is a bit that interests me personally, uh, which does the hardware interaction, it, it really is the driver. Uh, so that's, that's what we ended up with, this is what we um, set out to, to pursue, uh, and uh, this talk will be a bit of a status of where we're at with it. Uh, so um, we've introduced a couple of new things here. First, the state tracker concept. Basically, that state tracker looks a lot like uh, an old-fashioned Mesa driver, uh, but rather than targeting a particular piece of hardware, uh, it's targeting this interface here, which is really the interface to Gallium 3D. So uh, that's the glue that, that takes you from Mesa to sort of old world of Mesa to a, a sort of a newer, uh, cleaner set of interfaces. Uh, and um, uh, well, uh, the, second, the second interface is this guy here, which we're calling the, at this point the Windows Test interface. It's the back end interface uh, that abstracts away things like clip breaks, uh, 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 command submission. Uh, any sort of hardware interaction, uh, any any aspect of talking to the kernel module, uh, all those things are sort of behind that interface. And this interface really looks a lot like uh, a batch buffer submission interface, uh, and perhaps a, you know, a memory manager interface. So it's, it's memory management on the card uh, and uh, command submission, and that's kind of it. And the rest of the rest of the task of turning that into a working driver for the particular environment that you care about, be that DRI or something else, uh, is all uh, pushed into this into, the, into this module back here, the, the wind system. Uh, so, um, and that, that diagram is still pretty much correct, you know, there's, there's been evolution, but it's, uh, we've been pursuing this for, for a little while now, and it's, it's looking like it's a, a good design. Uh, so, since then, uh, so, uh, 
those interfaces have evolved. Yeah, we made a, a first stab at things, and there have been people out there who've been tracking this work, uh, <laughs> and I feel their pain because uh, it's been hard enough for us to keep up with it. Um, and um, you know, if you're, if you're doing this as a you know, sort of spare time thing, I think just whoa. Uh, Uh, if you're doing this as a spare time thing, you probably um, find that you spend <laughs> most of your time just uh, dealing with the interface changes that have occurred over the last you know, few months. That's um, it's kind of hard to avoid that because we, you know, it's hard to jump right in with the right interface from, from the start. We've evolved as, as issues have come up. It's inevitable. Uh, but hopefully now we're moving to a point where things are stabilizing. Uh, we've got a pretty good idea of uh, what we're doing with these interfaces, there's some things on the horizon, but I'm, I'm hoping that these guys' this pain will be drawing to an end, uh, and that, uh, 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 well, yeah, that we're getting there, basically. Uh, so, that's all kind of boring. Uh, okay, so the thing that you'll miss from this this slide, is this is all, this is my view of the driver, you know, it's, it's all about drawing. Uh, so, some other people care about, you know, allocating surfaces and um, uh, doing swap buttons and things like that, all the stuff that um, GLX handles. And GLX is just kind of off the horizon here. Uh, so we've had to, probably the big change to this diagram is that there's a, a line going down through here uh, that, that handles those things. And this, this really looks like a 3D rendering context. Uh, the, so the, the bit that's missing really uh, uh, corresponds to a, a per screen driver. So that this, this plan uh, is very good for, for, for drawing context. It, it pretty much ignores uh, how you create a context and uh, what, what environment those contexts live in. And that's important for a couple of reasons. Uh, most, uh, I think the key that, that tripped this up is the fact that um, uh, there is sharing of surfaces and, and various other uh, uh, data structures between contexts. And to really achieve that properly, you do need some sort of external persistent entity that, that manages that. So that was kind of missing from, from uh, my worldview, and that was kind of deliberate just to get to the, the core of what, what we really wanted to achieve, but uh, since then reality has um, asserted itself, and we've had to deal with that a little bit. Uh, okay, we've, um, uh, in terms of development, we've got some hardware drivers running. Uh, they're all in various states of um, completeness. Uh, basically, the 915 has been our, our workhorse. It's, you know, it's, a, it's a simple piece of hardware. It's well behaved. We love it, uh, and it's been kind of the mule that we've um, built this thing on the back of. Uh, Type is the software rasterizer, and so in terms of status, these are pretty much in order of uh, doneness, I guess. So, so 915 is, you know, it runs most stuff. Uh, it could use some work. Uh, uh, you know, it's there, it exists. Uh, the biggest problem with it is that it's probably impossible for anybody in this room to build. Basically, we, uh, at, the, at the time we started this work, we all had test machines that had 915 running on a fine. Uh, we just kept them in that state. Um, now, nobody knows how to recreate them. <laughs> They've all got various odd uh, kernel modules, X drivers, patches, and things like that that just happened to work at that point. Uh, there's no way that, that I could give you a recipe to build that driver, and that's something that we're going to fix uh, pretty shortly. Uh, uh, so, uh, and you know, interesting stuff has happened on the head, uh, on the trunk since this time, since the time that we started that work. So, DRI2 has landed. Uh, 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 what else? There's been evolution in the um, uh, memory manager, uh, etc. Uh, and it's going to be very interesting for us to get this driver into that environment uh, and um, bring it up to speed and, and see what the see what the world looks like with that there. Um, uh, so SoftPipe is, is what we call the software rasterizer. That's, that's probably, no, really it's the most complete of the drivers. I guess it's, it's number two because it's, it's not as interesting as a hardware driver to most people. Uh, it's, uh, it needs some performance work. It would be a very interesting project if anybody wanted to take it on. Uh, basically, uh, if, if you've got an interest in runtime code generation or um, doing cool stuff uh, that people will love you for, uh, SoftPipe has opportunities. Um, 
then, uh, and, and okay, and further down we've got the, we've spent a bit of time on the self driver, I'll talk about that later, uh, and there's a fairly functional 965 driver out there that, um, uh, again, it, it's, you know, if, if you didn't like the 915 driver, the fact that you can't build it, you won't like the 965, because, um, yeah, it, uh, yeah it's, it's even worse. Uh, and so, uh, and, and then there's, you know, it's impressive that throughout this turmoil uh, and this rapid development process that some, some people out there have um, even tried to track it. And in fact, there's at least two groups have done that. So, so in the front row, uh, there's been a, an effort in Nouveau, I believe, to take the G40 driver on the Galley Intersect. And in And um, Jerome has, has put some effort into the RP100 as well. Uh, so, software rasterizer I talked about. Um, uh, you get some buzzwords like LLVM, which is a really cool uh, compiler architecture for um, uh, useful for runtime code generation. We um, we have code that build, uh, compile fragment shaders dynamically uh, using LLVM uh, to really finish the project. Uh, you want to compile a lot more than just the fragment shader. You want to integrate that dynamic compilation process with a, uh, something that looked at drawing a whole triangle or a bunch of triangles and, and code generate the whole lot. Uh, um, and if, you, if you took that on, you'd probably be rewarded with a, with a you know, very capable uh, software rasterizer. Uh, that's a task for somebody. I, I don't think uh, it's not really on the horizon to do that, uh, as cool as it is. Um, uh, 915 uh, hasn't tracked XORG, as you know. Um, we're going to fix that. We're going to make it fast. You'll love it. Um, and yes, and this is the other thing too. So part of part of this process, if, if you go back to this diagram, here we go. So this is this is um, if you think about dependencies, this piece here, which is, is really the driver now. That really the only thing that it really knows about or has any knowledge of uh, is how to, how to drive the hardware. It really doesn't know anything about OpenGL. Uh, it doesn't know anything about uh, the DRI. It doesn't know anything about uh, window existence generally. Uh, and, uh, the nice thing about that is, well, two nice things. One, it makes it very straightforward to write one of these. You don't have to think about that stuff while you're working on this code. But as a side benefit, it means that that code can run in a whole lot of different places, simply by swapping out these other components. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, so the, the, the thing that we have done, uh, and this is this is TG's a business. Uh, we like to pay our wages. Uh, this thing we've got it running on Windows, uh, and it works. This thing actually uh, exists uh, in some sense as a, a DX9 driver. Um, uh, what can I say? You don't care, but it, it's helpful for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the point is, you know, if it does that, then it'll do whatever you like. It, whatever you care about, whatever um, you know, obscure uh, set of API and operating system and um, windowing system that you've got an interest in, uh, you have the possibility to port these drivers to that environment uh, you know, in a manageable way. It's, it's feasible. Uh, if you you know, um, and this yeah this is something that really wasn't possible with you know, it vaguely possible with the DRI, but there's a lot of work. Uh, you probably would have ended up with un unsupported fork of the DRI drivers. Uh, it's yeah, this is a new thing. So so the point is that you know if you if you if you care about portability, this is a win for you. Um, and you don't even need hardware. Uh, this is again this is probably not that applicable to, to everybody here. Uh, but if you um, if you're trying to run a driver, uh, it, you don't you know this thing the driver now no longer actually talks to hardware. It talks through a very stereotyped interface uh, that you can put whatever you like behind. Uh, so if you um, if you want to analyze the hardware interactions by dumping files, if you've got a simulator that runs in a batch sort of a way, uh, if you just don't have the hardware but want to test the driver for some change, whatever, uh, that's possible. Uh, and, and, and this works as well. Uh, so uh, probably, you know, probably, uh, probably the most interesting thing to do, do with this is capture and, and replay of the replay. Uh, uh, 
so if, you, if you're capturing files, then you probably also want to be able to replay them. So that would be a, a useful thing to, to tack on at some point. Um, I'm ripping through it. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, uh, probably the the sexiest thing that's going on in, in Mesa with with this architecture right now is is the cell driver. Uh, we what have we done? Again, this, this code is out there, it exists, you can pull it down. If you've got a PS3, uh, you can install Linux on it, I'm sure you know that. Uh, this, is a, this is a project to actually bring 3D graphics to your PS3. Um, <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> uh, so, in fact, um, uh, so, uh, Brian Paul has primarily been working on this. Uh, he's, um, He's really plugging away at it for a little while now. It got the first triangle in December. Uh, it's, uh, uh, and by that first triangle, uh, rasterization is being done on the SPUs. Uh, vertex processing currently being done on the PPU. So we're really treating, we're really treating the system a bit like a um, regular computer uh, with a, a CPU here and this sort of very odd uh, graphics card sort of rasterization of all graphics out here. Uh, that's, that's a useful way to start bringing it up. Um, whether they're looking, I, I think the, the plan ultimately is to, yeah, is to really do everything on the SMUs, so vertex processing, clipping, etc. Uh, but the, the initial task is, is rasterization. Um, so that's now running simple Mesa demos. Uh, basic texturing is working. The, the main missing parts are um, uh, uh, runtime compilation of the fragment shaders. So, so interestingly, I probably didn't get a lot of characteristics of this interface uh, here. Um, uh, uh, the abstraction that it makes of the hardware is, is to throw, one of the characteristics of the abstraction it makes is to throw away the fixed function view of the world, so um, lights and matrices and um, uh, texture environment, all the, all the sort of um, classic GL stuff is, is being thrown away. Uh, basically, the, the hardware looks like it. There's, there's some state, uh, there's a uh, vertex program uh, and a fragment program. And there we have a, a pretty expressive language for describing those programs. Uh, and between them, it's, it's possible to implement you know, all of the um, classic OpenGL um, transformation, lighting, clipping, uh, texturing, uh, etc., uh, through these fragment and vertex programs. Uh, the nice, I mean, th this is a very clean way of describing graphics uh, state. It means that instead of dealing with arcane concepts like, like lights and how do you optimize a light and what, you know, how do you code generate a light, uh, which is um, an odd, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, you're dealing with sort of sensible things like how do I code generate a, a program at runtime? When I have a program I want to compile it to at runtime. That, that's, that's easy for people to understand. But it, it means you don't have to uh, be a graphics expert to work on the, the performance parts of a driver. Um, you have to be a compiler, actually. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, so what's missing currently is, is the is that dynamic compilation step. So we've got a couple of hard coded uh, shaders that we select between. Uh, uh, it's enough to get uh, simple lighting and shading and, and basic texturing working. Uh, 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 it'll get done, uh, but if anybody's interested, it, it would be a fun, a fun project as well, if you've got an interest in yeah, any of this stuff. Uh, so that's, that's what the first triangle looked like back in December. Uh, I thought we'd better have our triangle. Uh, it's, it's indicated that this is, this is how, you know, if you, if you do a lot of graphics, this is your light. Basically, by the time you get to this, you, you know, you're getting there. Um, the nice thing about this is, you know, Brian colored each of the squares uh, slightly according to the SPU that's doing the work. Uh, and you can see they really do, they join up very nicely. Um, uh, and that's, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much still how it's working. So, so it, it, pack, it packages up bits of rasterization work, palms them out the SPUs, gets the results back, uh, that's, that's the job done. Uh, and 
uh, probably going forward, the, um, there are a lot of ways to optimize that. There's, there's um, uh, probably two or three different strategies. I, I guess the thing about the cell chip is that it has no hardware architecture. You're not forced into implementing any particular graphics pipeline on that chip. Uh, so you have a, you have a possibility to, to uh, choose your pipeline. So, so most of these drivers, the software drivers emulate or, or modeled after you know, some set of behaviors that's been prototyped in hardware or, or developed in hardware. Because um, those guys have thought about it a lot more recently than anybody doing software rasterization. Uh, and so in terms of the cell driver, you've got a, you've got a choice as to whether you model a, a deferred mode uh, renderer, uh, uh, like, um, uh, I can't think of a good one, uh, uh, probably the 915 in, in zone rendering mode, if that means anything, uh, or um, whether you model uh, uh, something that's a bit more dynamic uh, in the way that packages work up, like a, a modern uh, NVIDIA or ATI GPU. Uh, there's no, there's no constraints on you because the hardware is, you know, it's completely general purpose computation device. It's just a very, very strong one. Uh, that, that really, I think, I mean, you know, if you think about it, people, people, are, the latest IBM revision of this chip is pushing, uh, I believe, six gigahertz. It's got, um, if you compare, you know, so shape, so GPUs have got a lot of cores, but they don't, they don't really push a very high. Um, Clock rate, you know, they, they clock they max out about uh, you know, gigahertz or something like that. So I think there's, there's a possibility that a, a well optimized cell driver uh, could be a you know, pretty competent you know, mid range GPU, especially if you, think about, if you think about the fact that the cell's been out for a few years now. Uh, if, if you're going to compare it against uh, GPU hardware, you'd probably compare it against the, the hardware that was being released at the same time that the cell came out. I think. I think in that cohort of, of GPUs, you probably find that a, a well-optimized cell driver is actually, you know, a, a, a contender. Um, but we have to get there first, and, and that's, that's happening. Um, okay, so when I guess um, if I transition to uh, some of the things we've learned along the way, um, I guess if we if we go back to the um, DRI, the original driver, I, I gave a pretty um, rosy view of that. I showed you a, a simplified picture of it. What's, what was missing is this large other chunk of code uh, sitting out there that um, basically implements a, a second set of drawing paths which uh, are used on fallback. Uh, so a fallback is, is obviously um, some set of GL state that we don't really know how to program the driver, the hardware to do. Uh, and basically the strategy that we've used for dealing with that is to say, well, we can't do it, let's get the software rasterized to, to draw it. Uh, and that, that's pretty unsatisfactory. Um, uh, uh, you get a correct image, you satisfy the conformance test, that people uh, assume the driver isn't working because it takes seconds or minutes to render a frame, uh, and that's that's not that's not what people are really looking for in, in their drivers. Um, uh, in fact, you know, if given the option, most people will turn uh, fallbacks off and accept you know minor uh, rendering errors, but to have a usable uh, uh, application. So uh, that's jumping ahead a bit. Um, so, so in terms of Gallium, we did have, and, and this impacts on Jerome's talk a little bit. Uh, uh, we um, we had a strategy for fallbacks that, that uh, basically was sketched out uh, and never never fully implemented. Uh, and that was that's basically you know along the same lines. Uh, and uh, it sounds like I'm saying this this will never happen. Um, it, it could still. Uh, but um, I guess I'd like to think there was a better way than, than just coming up with another fallback path that used the software, you know, used the same trick of the software rasterizer. So fallbacks are bad. We don't like them. Uh, can we do better? Well, I think I think we probably can. Um, we've got hardware that's Turing complete. Um, ish. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, 
uh, we've got smart hardware, we've got hardware that's flexible, we've got a, a nice uh, layered interface. You know, we can probably come up with ways of uh, getting the rasterization that we need even though it doesn't obviously map onto hardware. So things like, things that were typically formats in the path are um, uh, anti-alias points. Uh, in GL there's, there's uh, uh, interesting rules for how these are supposed to be drawn that don't map well or don't map natively onto um, the, the facilities that are provided in uh, regular GPUs. GPUs are really optimized to draw uh, triangles, to apply a shader to those triangles, uh, and to, to stick the result out to memory. Uh, um, uh, it's pretty hard to map the, the uh, round AA point uh, onto triangles natively without, you know, without playing with state. And that's what we do. We, we, we play with state behind the scenes. So, um, so if you can imagine somebody drawing an anti-alias point, applying to that a particular shader and a particular set of states, uh, basically uh, what we end up doing is uh, writing a second shader uh, that, that uh, effectively gives you the picture. We will end up drawing a quad with a second shader that discards all of the pixels that shouldn't be in the round point uh, and applies the anti-alias sort of uh, fall off coverage coverage stuff uh, to that shape uh, and composing that shader with the shader that the, um, the, the application has actually provided. So we'll, we'll glue these two shaders together in, in, the, in the state tracker basically outside of the driver. There's a, there's a piece of code that's written once and, and works on any piece of hardware uh, that, that you know, basically constructs a new GL state out of the the desired application state and what we need to do to implement uh, AA points. Uh, and, then, and then just sends it down to the, the hardware driver. The driver never knew it happened. Uh, the driver just finds it's being asked to draw a quad with a particular shader. It loves it, uh, eats it up, uh, and you get an AA point. There's no fallback. Uh, generally, that's a, that's a better approach than what, what, we're, tr what we're trying to do uh, more of. And the goal uh, with the 915, and, and the 915 is a bit of a classic because it, it does have some of these wards, <coughs> uh, and it does have fallbacks uh, in the current in the current driver. Uh, and our goal in the sort of medium term is to basically uh, demonstrate this concept of, uh, by putting together a 915 driver that, that has not has no fallback. So we'll, we'll render anything in, in GL1 point whatever uh, without resorting to a software rasterization. Uh, Okay, um, this is the uh, thing that I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, the lovely diagram omits um, uh, any sort of information about how GLX is supposed to be implemented. Um, this, uh, this was obvious from the start because swap up is a GLX concept, uh, and we ended up with this sort of weird uh, uh, you know, layer breaking uh, jump into there. And it really the layers don't break, it's just that the, the, the things, the, thing, the components uh, that implement that jump were, were missing or absent from the diagram. Uh, and uh, similarly, other things like creating surfaces, etc., re really need a little bit more to, to be correct. Um, blah, blah, blah. So we've ended up, so that, that wins this thing. This is basically been the subject. Probably most of the evolution has happened in here. And that's a little bit surprising because um, <coughs> of all these boxes, this is actually a very small piece of code. This is, this is 3,000 lines of code, I think, in the current repository. Um, but what you'll see if you look at it is it's just a box of interfaces. There's, there's five or six. So there's, coming into here, there's, there's actually two interfaces here. So one, two, the DRI, regular DRI driver interface, three. Uh, then it's talking to the DRM, four, uh, and to uh, the X, the DDX, the X server. So five, there's five interfaces generated into 3,000 lines of code. Um, and basically, yeah, we, uh, for, this, for this to be correct, it's, it's had to split a little bit. So it's, um, uh, there's, 
there's a line through there, above the line uh, we have per context uh, stuff, so basically the, the things that the command processing, drawing, etc. stuff. Uh, below the line, uh, uh, persistence per screen object that handles service management, uh, etc. Uh, context creation, that sort of stuff. Um, Okay, so and that's to, to illustrate how much is in there and uh, how surprisingly complex it is. That's kind of that's it, kind of broken out into into its components. And I think this is this is probably closer to the truth as to how this this is going to be implemented going forward. I think um, we'll probably see these three parts of the Windows get split off into their own little uh, modules. Um, it's not as nice, but it, it works better. Uh, and the nice, the nice thing about that is, um, so so with, with that previous, uh, with this with this everything in one place situation, you end up with the same problem that we had with uh, Mesa with Mesa drivers as a whole. That you um, to um, create new ones of these for new.